Yo, what is up guys? Welcome to another Wild Rift video. And in today's video, I'll be showing you guys how to play Ezreal. And this is actually a very important video because if you don't play Ezreal the right way, then he's gonna absolutely suck. But if you really understand Ezreal's kit, and I'm gonna be explaining to you how you need to use his abilities, how you need to combo him, how you need to play in the early game, how you need to, uh, like general tips and tricks, how to build and everything, you know? So make sure you watch this video. And today's gameplay video is also really nice because we had two useless teammates. So it was a three versus five. So it's gonna be nice for you guys to see how I handled it. And I really think this video is gonna really help you, you know, win more games. Really, really, I really believe it. Keep in mind, I'm doing a skin giveaway, giving away 10 skins this month. All you gotta do, put down a comment under this video and you'll be entered. Okay, so now I'm gonna be explaining the build. And if you don't care about the build, you can skip to the timestamps to the gameplay. So in Ezreal, there is really only one good build. I have tested different builds, but this is the best build. You start with a mana immune. And um, the way that I start Ezreal, you know, in the early, early game, uh, I buy this item. Let me find it here. The, the Sapphire Crystal. So when you start the game, I always buy a Sapphire Crystal. If you get this item very, like as your first item, you're not going to have a lot of damage. But you're going to be able to stack up the Sapphire Crystal, which is incredibly important. It's more important than your early game. So buy a Sapphire Crystal, spam your abilities. And during the gameplay video, I'm going to be giving you tips on how you can get these stacks very fast. So I'm not going to talk about it now. Of course, after your Sapphire Crystal... Um, get a tier of goddess and all the other components of mana immune now th there is a very important thing on on Ezreal. you have to get mana immune before the first dragon mana immune costs 2800 gold and as you can see it is incredibly cheap compared to the other items like blade of the rune king costs 3100 gold infinity edge 3400 gold etc you know everything is expensive but mana immune is 2800 gold so in the in the gameplay video i'm going to be explaining to you how you can do it but basically always get this item before the first dragon it's a really important power spike okay after after uh man immune get trinity force and sheen first you know build a sheen first and then build your sheen into your trinity force the reason for that is because sheen is going to give you bonus damage and um your first ability you know the poking ability is going to trigger sheen so with Sheen, it's going to do crazy good damage. So please, guys, don't get Phage or Stinger. Get a Sheen first. Super, super important. Okay, really important. Okay, so when you finish these two items, you have already entered Ezreal's strong phase. And of course, getting to these first two items is going to be really hard. But again, during the gameplay, I'm going to be explaining to you how to do it. But after these two items, you are very strong. So, um... After these two items, it becomes a little situational. Of course, after you mana immune, you know, you need to build tier 1 boots at least to be a little faster. And there are really two, two uh, upgraded boots that you can get on Ezreal, which is either Glutinous Greaves or um, Boots of Lucidity. I quickly want to say that if the enemy is full attack damage, you can also go for Plated Steel Caps. And I'm going to tell you one more thing about the enemy being full attack damage. So let's say the enemy is truly full attack damage. If they have zero ability power, you can actually swap out the Trinity Force for uh, Iceborne Gauntlet. Now you might be thinking, what the hell are you talking about? Trust me, this item also gives you bonus damage when you use your first ability. However, Trinity Force gives you 200% base damage, this one 100%. So obviously Iceborne Gauntlet is going to give you less damage, but it gives you 50 armor and of course the slow and 25 ability haste. Only get Iceborne Gauntlet against full attack damage comps. You are not going to regret it. So, you know, only against full attack damage comps. Keep that in mind. Otherwise, always at Trinity Force. And after that, as I said, you can either get Glutinous Greaves or, or Ionian Boots of Lucidity. As I said, full attack damage, get uh, Plated Steel Caps. Okay, after that, honestly, 90% um, of the games, I go for Blade of the Rune King. And in 10% of the games, I go for Death's Dance third item. So let me explain to you when you should get Death's Dance as your third item. Get Death's Dance if the enemy has a full burst comp. Because what that stance does is it delays the burst and it gives you lifesteal so you can survive burst damage. So if the enemy's composition is like Zed, Evelyn and Akali, let's say the enemy has Zed, Evelyn and Akali. 
If they have that, you have to get Death Dance third item. Don't go for the Blade of the Rune King because Death Dance is going to give you survivability. Don't get a Guardian Angel, by the way, guys, please, because Death Dance is a million times better on Ezreal. So keep in mind, 90% of the games, Blade of the Rune King, and if the enemy has a lot of burst and they're really focusing you, get a Death Dance. Death Dance, yes. So after these two items, you'll have so much uh, lifesteal, yes. Because Blade of the Rune King gives you 10% physical vamp and Death Dance another 10%. And you can even get Glutinous Griefs. And if you have all this, you'll have 28% physical vamp, which is absolutely huge. You're going to heal up so much. Um, and after these items, um, I always go for Mortal Reminder because this one is going to be a Tank Shredder. Sometimes I go for Guardian Angel, sometimes almost never. This is only if the enemy really doesn't have any tanks. But it's almost always going to be worth it for you to just get a Mortal Reminder because it reduces healing and it's good against tanks. Another thing that I really want to tell you about Ezreal is if the enemy has a lot of healing, Listen carefully, if the enemy has a lot of healing, you can build an early executioner's calling. When do you build it? Yeah, that's a good question, guys. Let me tell you when you should build it. So you finish up your man immune, then you finish up your sheen. This is very important. And after your sheen, so now I'm actually going to show you, you know, I don't want to confuse you here. Um, let, where's the sheen? I actually cannot see sheen. Oh, sheen is here. Yeah, so after you finish the sheen, here you can get the executioner's calling so your build is gonna look like this you see this man immune sheen executioner's calling and then and after that you're gonna finish off your trinity force okay this is only against a lot of healing i just completely screwed up the build but that was it about the build let's get into the runes i always go for conqueror as well. it's just really really nice and here there are two runes that you can go for gathering storm or champion Go for Champion if you're really good at Ezreal and you really feel like you're not going to die. Otherwise, go for Gathering Storm because this is going to give you massive late game damage. As your third rune, always Regeneration. Even though you have a mana immune, Regeneration is going to be really, really nice for you because this is going to give you infinite mana. As your fourth ability, so, okay, as your fourth ability, you can either go for Mana Flow Band or Sweet Tooth. Let me explain to you a thing about Mana Flow Band. So this item, Mana Immune, builds into Murama. And as it reads, grants attack damage equal to 1.5% of all your mana. Also, consume 3% of current mana to deal double that amount as bonus damage. This skills with Mana Flow Band. So the 300 bonus mana that Mana Flow Band provides to you is also directly going to be granting you bonus damage because of the Murama. It skills, like it actually skills with the item. So keep that in mind. So I almost always go for Mana Flow Band unless I'm against a really hard matchup. If I'm against a really hard and punishing matchup, I go for Sweet Tooth, you know, so I'm able to actually survive the lane. So that was it about the build You, uh, as your spells, Flash and Barrier. And yeah, let's get into the gameplay. All right, guys, on to the gameplay. So to the, like this gameplay, you are gonna love it you are really gonna love it and if you started the video here you have to watch the late game i'm not gonna spoil but you have to watch it so actually in this video i'm not only gonna teach you how to play as real but i'm also gonna teach you how to deal with tilting teammates and really bad teammates and you'll see what i mean later on in this game you'll see so look at what i'm doing here this is already a very important thing about Ezreal. I am spamming my abilities in 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 the air, you know, hitting nothing. The reason that I'm doing that is, at, look at over there, you see that tear? It says 30 right now. Um, I'm doing it because I want to stack that up. You know, that's the bonus mana. You all, like when you have this tear item, when you want to build an item that uh, uh, you need these stacks on from the tear of goddess, you need to use your abilities randomly in base while walking to somewhere because you want to stack it as fast as possible you know whenever i get 700 stacks my man immune is gonna upgrade to murama which is a huge upgrade so you have to do this what i'm doing right here spam your abilities don't hold on to your abilities please don't do it and okay this is already gonna be another tip on Ezreal because look at how i'm laning as you can see nami and jinx destroys us this combination can absolutely destroy us in the early game um 
And the reason for that is because obviously Nami has really good uh, really good damage and survivability with the healing. And Jinx can shoot rockets at me. And for me, it's going to be very hard to hit my first ability. So the way that you want to play this lane, as you can see that me and Janna are doing right now, as an Ezreal, you just want to do poke. Like as you can see, you know, just kind of poking the enemy. I actually kind of failed there. And uh, you poke them with your first ability. And what the Janna is doing, just, you know, also poking with her tornado. So as you can see, just play it safe. Don't overextend. Here the Janna overextended. Look, huge mistake. Huge, huge mistakes. And we're both 1 HP. This is how hard you get punished on Ezreal in the early game. And this is what I mean with if you do this on Ezreal, he is S plus tier. What I'm doing right now is absolutely garbage. And Janna is also doing garbage. So don't do this. What we should have done instead is stay behind the turret, wait for the minions, and then farm the minions under the turrets. If we did that, we would have actually stayed at higher HP. Because right now we're very vulnerable to ganks. So play it safe in the early game. Don't like don't be trying to do some crazy things. Unless, of course, you can catch out an enemy, but otherwise you are gonna lose the early game. If the enemy ADC is a good player, you're gonna lose. So as you can see, looked on the map, I saw the Lee Sin. I looked on the map, very, very important. You might you might not have noticed it, but I did. There was a Lee Sin. I went behind my turret, you know? This is how you want to play. Look, the Darnami is actually so good. Wow, actually impressive. And here it is. The Evelyn ganked. I saw the opportunity and I took the kill. Beautiful, beautiful. And take a look at this. Another kill. This is so good. Of course, take the opportunities when you can. The Evelyn was ganking my lane. I was immediately ready with my ultimate to kill the enemy. You know, I was immediately uh, ready to kill the enemies. So right now I'm 2-0. This is huge. As you can see, while I'm in the base, I'm spamming my abilities, right? Oh, the enemy Nami, I didn't actually send it because it's a little toxic. The enemy Nami went 0-9 in my last game. He was my support in my last game. I was also playing Ezreal. I actually had, uh, we lost the game and I was the MVP in the losing team. Um, the Nami was 0-9. But he, this guy actually played really well in this game. You'll see later on in the game. Like, take a look. This is actually really good by the Nami. Wow. And here you can still see how weak Ezreal is in the early game. I have already finished um, a mana immune, but yet I'm still losing a 1v1 against an Nami because Ezreal is garbage in the early game. Keep that in mind. So now I have an advantage. 2-0 and how do, you, how do you play with this advantage when you're playing Ezreal? So the way that you play with it is uh, you can be a little more aggressive in your lane now because you are pretty strong. Right now I am actually stronger than the Jinx. As you can see, I'm still doing the poking with my first ability, but right now me and Janna can actually engage in a fight and possibly get kills. So I'm going to be playing way more aggressive now. As you can see, way more aggressive. Not playing passively anymore because I got kills. You want to exploit it, right? Look at this positioning, by the way. Staying over the wall, hitting the enemies. I don't want to go in. Not yet. Oh, the Akali actually destroyed our team. Wow. This is bad. Look, my team completely inting here, actually. Really, really, really bad. This is a lost dragon. So in this case, what you want to do is oh, get a kill if you can. But besides that, stay safe and don't go for the dragon. Because, you know, don't like here. Look, I went for the dragon. What's going to happen? I'm actually killing them all, which is kind of funny. But this is so risky what I'm doing right here. Wow. Damn, yeah. I did go for the dragon and I actually survived with the skin off my bones. This is crazy. And I still want to say that this was a mistake. Even though I killed them all, um, when like after that three of my teammates got killed, it was a mistake. Because the only reason that I didn't die is because the enemies played that very badly. So what the enemies should have done is they could have easily collapsed on me and killed me. But what they did instead is the Lee Sin was doing dragon and some other guy was helping him. And then they went on me one by one. So this was the enemy's mistake. So um, um, as I said, I was just lucky there. It was a mistake. Like right now, I haven't played Ezreal too well in this game. Even though I'm 3-0. Even though I'm 3-0. Like I'm not saying I played badly. But I'm saying that the enemies played 
like bad. That's why I'm 3-0 right now. It's not really because I played really well. It's just because I punished the enemies for playing bad. Like, look, again, horrible, horrible, horrible. I used my... Uh, so what happened there is I just went way too far. Ezreal has really big range. You have your first ability. And that's pretty much the only thing that you want to be trading with in lane. Yeah, look, my, my team is saying FF. They're kind of done with it. So what I should have done stayed back and only use my first ability to poke the enemy Jinx and Nami. Like, I was 3-0 in this game and I was like, yeah, I can easily win a fight. No, you cannot. You are Ezreal. You are garbage early game. You won't easily win a fight. Just keep farming and only get kills if you can. Don't overextend, you know. That's how you need to play Ezreal. Farm for the late game. Just farm for the late game and don't die. If you do this, you are gonna be so, like you're gonna do so much damage in the late game it's actually crazy um so as you can see here you know um, i'm taking extra farm you know, I'm just farming as much as possible here i was kind of thinking by myself like hmm i just made a huge mistake i gave the jinx a lot of shutdown gold because uh, i gave her a turret and i gave her a shutdown kill so everything that i did in this game was pretty much useless because the jinx just ca caught up to me and she also got Rift Herald. This is really bad. Like, as you can see, the Jinx is actually level 9, which is terrible. So here, look at my positioning. Just staying in the outside of the fight a little bit, and I was hard diving the Nami. That was pretty much the only thing I could have done there, because diving in too deep was a little bit too risky for me there. <clears throat> so here, as you can see, I'm not making the same mistake. I saw Akali, but I didn't go for her, because Akali is two levels ahead of me. So what I'm doing is, again, just farming. And look, the Akali actually hard diving me. So yeah, I flashed out, of course, because I don't want to die. <clears throat> like, now I'm playing better. This is better. Not taking unnecessary fights, because... Um, see, I'm going to explain to you... Like, you might be thinking that I'm talking crap right now. But I'm going to be explaining to you why this is important to know. So when you take these, these very risky fights on a champion like Ezreal, you're likely going to lose, right? You're likely going to lose. And what's going to happen is, if you die, you're going to get behind. And what the enemies can do then is snowball. <coughs> because Ezreal is really weak in the early game they can snowball you so what I mean with that they can keep ganking you and killing you over and over and over again then you're gonna be 0-7 and it's gonna take you like 30 minutes to get a full build do you get my point now guys what I'm talking like what I mean with um, even though I got kills it was not good my point is that it was risky I took like really unnecessary risk if the enemies punished me effectively there they would have killed me and possibly snowballed me. So, on Ezreal, as I said, play it safe, farm, get kills when you can, but don't dive too deep. Don't dive too deep. In the early game, you're likely gonna have to use your third ability to escape from the enemy. You know, keep that in mind as well. It's your only escaping ability. <laughs> so, the dragon spawned again and the Garen just died. So, here I'm thinking, what the hell can we do? And the Mountain Dragon is the most important dragon for Ezreal. It's, it's probably even more important than Infernal Dragon. Because this dragon is gonna deny all your poke. As you can see, all we're doing is, you know, I'm trying to get it with my ult, but... Diving in here is a mistake. As you can see, you know, they got it, unfortunately. I'm not diving in. Here, like, here I'm playing way smarter. Way... This is way smarter what I'm doing right now. You know, just... I'm, I don't care about my team. Because obviously this team is kind of trash. I am focusing on my farm. This is how you want to play as a real solo queue. Focus on yourself, farm up, and carry the late game. As you can see here, I had a chance to kill Akali, but she it. Focus on yourself, farm as much as you can, just like I'm doing right now. Farming and farming and farming. That's what you want to do, and that's all you have to do on as Oh, my camera just crashed. And that's all you have to do on as real. Don't die. If you die, you're going to lose farm. And it's going to delay your late game by a lot. You want to get late game as fast as possible. I'm going to repeat it a lot of times. Because this is how you need to play Ezreal. Okay. This is how you need to play Ezreal. That, and that's why pe that's why a lot of people build champion rune on Ezreal too. Because the way that they, the, the way that they played the champion rune. Is they play it safe in the early game. So they don't die. You know they stay behind their turret and farm. So they can maintain the champion rune for the first dragon and fights after that. That's basically what you want to do with the champion room. <clears throat> okay, as you can see, I'm... Oh, no. No, no, no. Again, guys. Horrible, horrible mistake. But look at this 
Oh my god! Nami killed me, but I did, had a beautiful kill on the Jinx. I, it's true that I overextended a little bit, but I did a beautiful combination. And I suggest you to rewind and really check out how I did it. Because I used my second ability, my first ability, and my ultimate perfectly to do a lot of damage on the Jinx. So I really suggest you to rewind the video and check out how I did that combo. Because micro gameplay is also really important on Ezreal. Um, okay, so let me talk about Ezreal micro gameplay. Obviously, your first ability is your main ability, right? Hitting this ability is going to be very important. And yes, it is not easy, I know. See, the tip that I have for you about the first ability is just play Ezreal. So when I played Ezreal, the first 5 to 10 games, I was really bad at aiming the first ability. But after that, I really got the hang of it. Because like when you play Ezreal a few times, you're really going to get used to how fast your first ability travels and when you where you need to aim it and things like that so my tip for you is practice sounds a little bit stupid but really the first ability is gonna get good with practice about the second ability um use this when you can get a little closer to the enemy or if you really believe that you can hit your first ability after hitting it because that's only when it's worth it right like when you're hard diving an enemy use your second ability always do that when you're diving use your second ability then either proc it with your first ability or a basic attack always when you're diving and when you're poking think can i really hit the enemy with my first ability easily then you can shoot your second ability as well otherwise if you if you don't think you can just spam your first ability and hit, try to hit the enemy with that. So take a look at what I'm doing here. Farming. You know, I'm level 12 already, which is decent. This is like, you know, I into two times in this game already. And the Jinx is just getting ultra fat. And it's my fault that the Jinx is getting fat. Because of giving her a shutdown kill and a turret. Really, really stupid. As you can see, I'm not fighting. Because we will not win a fight. I am farming. Oh, and he survived because of the mountain dragon. That's so sad. Okay, so this is a thing that's also very important. Um, so, make effective usage of the minutes that you have in the game. So, what I mean with that is... Uh, by the way, take a look at this fight. I'm fighting the Zed and I just win. I just win the fight, right? Played it perfectly. Used my second ability to do as much damage as possible. I My first ability and everything. Really, really good. And, of course, the Lee Sin is here. And yeah, I actually tried to fight him. As you can see, like, oh my god, beautifully played. This was perfectly played. Again, I suggest you to really check out how I played there. Because I did my combos really well with my second ability, first ability, and where to flash, and everything like that, you know? <clears throat> I played, but oh, he's talking to... Yeah, look at the chat. The chat is, like, going crazy. And here, you know, they're doing yet another dragon. And the Jinx got it. Oh my god, the enemies have three dragons. Ouch. However, I want to say that up until now, I played pretty well. You know, as you can see, I have a lot of gold in the game right now. Um, besides the two mistakes that I made in the early game, I farmed really well. You know, because I farmed really well, I am going to get my late game power spike very soon. Like I'm level 13 already, which is really good. Level 13 at minute 15 is really, really nice on Ezreal. And I have a lot of gold as well. So once I get my death stance, it's going to be a huge power spike. Because then the Zed is going to have a really rough time at killing me. Because death stance counters burst damage, of course. <clears throat> and the thing is though, as I said, you are going to outskill everyone in the late game. It's true that the enemies have three dragons. It's true. But still... In the late game, I outskill them. You know, I if I play well, I can just hard carry this game in the late game. Let's take a look. My team is inting yet again. What I'm doing here is uh, careful positioning, but only diving in when I think I can get a kill. And as you can see, the Z was loaded. That's why I actually dived in. You never want to dive in if, if you you never want to dive in if your team is not around because. Your, yeah, you know, diving in with your with your third ability is incredibly risky because that's your only escaping tool. So only dive in if you have allies around you, right? Or if you're in a 1v1 situation, then you can also do it. Take a look at my positioning, guys. Take a look at my positioning. I am positioning in, like, out of the range of the enemy Jinx. I don't want to get hit. Oh, beautifully played. Like, I don't want to get hit. I'm actually gonna, I'm actually gonna rewind here because you really need to see how I took that fight. Take a look. Take a look at my positioning. Here I only see Nami. And immediately when I see Jinx, 
I use my third ability away from her. I don't want to deal with Jinx damage. So I went away, killed the Nami, kept my Stasis Enchant for the Z, and then, you know, I only fought Jinx when I had my Evelyn and Janna next to me. That is what you want to do. Don't fight the Jinx in a 1v1. You're gonna lose. You're, you're actually gonna lose, you know. Uh, in this stage of the game, you're gonna lose. So this was, again, very, very well played. Just, you know, now, again, farming, taking turrets, everything like that. I can get my Death Stance. So I am gonna be incredibly strong after that. And after getting my Death Stance, we enter the late game with Ezreal, where you become super strong. And this is the moment where you're actually gonna be able to one-shot enemies. It's crazy how much damage you're gonna do. Okay, so we do have a problem, however, which is the three dragons, of course. Enemies, the enemies have three dragons, right? So here I'm thinking by myself. How can we win the game? And this is what you really need to do in your games too. Don't just play, you know, don't just play the games. Think, especially in the mid-late game, think, how the hell do we win this game? What are our win conditions? So what I was thinking here is, our win conditions is me. Only I can carry this game, right? The Evelyn is doing pretty good, but I have the big damage. So um, my win condition is to stay with Janna. Because you might you might think that it's not that important, but the Janna actually provide is providing me with a lot of things. She providing me with the shield of her third ability, and she has items that provide me bonus damage as well. So it's very important to receive a Janna shield in a team fight. So here I decided by myself I always have to fight with Janna to get all the bonus. So here, as you can see, sticking with my Janna, careful positioning, not diving too deep, and here I am gonna try to kill the enemies from the back line. Don't front line, guys, don't front line. Look at how I'm fighting. Staying in the back line. They actually all triggered stasis, it's crazy. Staying in the back line right now and just dealing damage. And here, now I can dive in. <clears throat> because the enemies are pretty weak here. Now this is a good moment to dive in. See? So when the enemies are full HP, don't dive in like an idiot. And here, now I can dive in. Why? Because they are weak, right? And here you can also see how important it is to stay with the Janna. The Janna is providing me with such huge, huge shields, which is allowing me to tank more damage and deal more da uh, tank damage and deal more damage. So keep that in mind, you know. Analyze what support you have and really try to effectively use it. It's very important on Ezreal. So here, what I'm doing is I'm looking at the Jinx, and of course, I see an opportunity to kill him. I do the full combination and I kill him. It's very important to kill a Jinx, of course, because she can steal the dragon with her ultimate. And now we got the Elder Cloud Dragon. And um, it's not that strong, because it we, we, ha we don't have a single dragon, so it only gives us 45 true damage. It's still good, but, you know, it's not a complete win yet. We can still lose the game. Okay, so as I said, now I have already entered the moment of the game where I am incredibly strong. So all we need to do is force a 5 versus 5 fight and we should win. We should genuinely always win a 5 versus 5. So as you can see here, I'm not going for any stupid plays like diving over the wall and things like that. Um, what I'm doing is staying with my team, finishing up my build right now and then fight with my team. You know, I want to make our chance, chances of winning as high as possible. That's why I'm also taking the red buff right now. And there should be no way that we lose a 5 versus 5 here. Not a single chance that the enemy has. But look at what my team is doing. Let's take a look. Two of them are already diving in. And of course, ally slain. Ally slain. Look at how, look at what I'm gonna do here. Boom! Easy kill on the Ezreal. This is late game Ezreal. Uh, easy kill on the Z. This is late game Z for you. Uh, Ezreal, what am I talking about? Look! at this look at this now when you get late game on Ezreal of course everything that I said earlier in the video doesn't matter you can dive in like like an idiot and still care, kill all the enemies the enemies have three dragons but Ezreal doesn't care you are gonna kill everyone and the Japanese voiceover is gonna tell you legendary and I am indeed legendary you know and I really hope this video helped you guys understand how to play Ezreal. I tried to give you tips that are not, you know, obvious. Like, you know, I, I want to give you some tips that are a little more advanced. I don't want to make stupid videos like, yeah, you need to hit your first ability. 
carefully aim your ultimate. Blah, blah, blah. I want to actually give you advanced tips on how you can really improve your game, you know? So I'm actually kind of curious how much damage I dealt. Let's take a look. Everyone was actually the MVP. As you can see, 44,000 damage. Oh, I actually reported the Garen for verbal abuse. Uh, I'm pretty sure I reported the Ari too, yeah. <laughs> so thank you guys very much for watching. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Remember, I'm doing a skin giveaway. Put a comment under this video and I'll see you all in the next Wilders video. Bye-bye.